All right, welcome back. Uh, let's try and uh, create a simple calculator in Java. So one thing about programming in Java is that everything you do has to be inside uh, what's called a class. And we'll talk more about what a, uh, what a class is and, and the role that it plays in, in Java and, and the topics later this week. Uh, but we start out by saying class and then the, the name uh, of our class, which is going to be cal calculator take one. Uh, and then we're going to use curly braces. Uh, so if you're, if you're coming from Python, this will be one thing uh, to, to get used to in Java, is that instead of colons and indenting, uh, to show kind of where blocks of code belong, Java uses curly braces. And so those, uh, and in fact, indentation is purely aesthetic. It, ser it does not serve uh, a semantic purpose, does not affect what the code does the way it does in Python. Uh, it simply curly braces show where the block of code starts and ends. So everything inside these two curly braces is inside this class definition. And uh, to have a class uh, be a program that we can, can run and, and uh, do input and output, uh, it's going to have what's called a main method. Uh, and these uh, main methods have a kind of mysterious incantation, public static void main, um, there's something with string um, uh, uh, args that uh, is a parameter. And by the end of this, uh, this first week, uh, we will understand what public static void uh, and this string brackets, what all of this, this means. But for now, we're going to, just, going to have to kind of take it as the, as the incantation that, that we need to, to make a main method in in Java. And so uh, I'm going to do system out.print uh, and ask um, the user to input uh, the arithmetic expression that our, um, uh, that our calculator is, is then going to compute for them. Uh, and uh, this, is the, this is the way that you uh, write print statements uh, in Java, system.out.print. It's uh, a little ver verbose, um, but it is what it is. And to get input, we're going to use a type of object called a scanner. Um, and so I'll just make, uh, I have to declare the variable type and then the variable name. So the variable type, capital S scanner, we know that it's an object. We're going to just call the, the variable lowercase scanner, as that will make it, it easy to tell what it is. And when we create uh, and, and when we initialize an object, uh, we typically need to use this new keyword to tell Java to create a new object. I want to cre create a new scanner object, and I have to tell it where is it going to read input from, and it's going to read input from system.in. This is uh, the kind of input from the terminal that is called standard in uh, in many cases. Uh, something else you may have picked up on is that each line of Java code needs to end with a semicolon. Um, and uh, this is also also something that will take take some uh, getting used to uh, if you're if you're not familiar with with, with Java and that it's, it's going to be very easy to forget. Uh, the semicolons, but fortunately the compiler is pretty good at, uh, at letting you know. And in fact, uh, I'm using uh, vi uh, Visual Studio Code uh, to write this up, and I want to, to call your attention to uh, this, these little icons in the uh, lower left, this little X and, and triangle, and these relate to, to things that, that uh, uh, Visual Studio Code is uh, problems that it's finding with um, with the files in my in my current project, uh, and it's also that what what's going on with these under underlines in red, uh, and you can see it says scanner cannot be resolved into a type. So Java doesn't know what this scanner is, uh, but the nice thing is that there's this quick fix option, and it says oh import scanner, parentheses Java.util. Well let's see what that does. 
and it's added this import statement up at the top here, input java.util.scanner. And so scanner is this kind of built-in uh, way of, of scanning text uh, in Java, uh, but like some uh, built-in parts uh, of Python, we need to import it uh, before we can use it. And so we need this import java.util.scanner in order for this uh, scanner to be available. Um, and then um, once I have my scanner variable, I can say that the left operand, uh, I'm going to um, read the, the next double from, uh, from the terminal. I'm then going to say there's going to be a string uh, operator, um, which I'll read the next uh, uh, string on the uh, from the terminal, and then I'll read the right operator, which I'll also read as a double. Um, and I want to say if my operator uh, is addition. And so just like uh, my class and uh, my main method, my if statement also uses curly braces to indicate kind of which code is inside the if statement. And I'll say um, system out dot print line. Uh, I'll just want to print the result, the uh, addition that my, uh, the user has asked for. Uh, notice that up here I said print. Uh, here I said print ln for print line. The only difference is that print line adds a, a new line at the end of what it prints. Didn't want to do that here uh, so the user would ent be able to enter the expression kind of on the same line as, as what this is printing. Uh, and for now what I'll do is uh, when the operator isn't addition, um, I will just uh, throw an exception. This is how you have uh, uh, generate uh, errors in Java code. So I'll throw a new unsupported uh, operation exception uh, to um, to let the user know that uh, that I that it does not know what uh, my calculator doesn't only understands addition. So now that I have this preliminary version finished, uh, I can go and click, uh, you'll see this little run debug here, um, which VS uh, code puts on every main method so I can run it. And it will pop up a terminal where it runs uh, the, the, the Java program. We see that it's a output inputs, uh, it outputs the string, input your expression, uh, and I can uh, do uh, four plus eight. Um, and a puzzling thing happens where uh, it says that it's uh, in thread main, so in in the uh, uh, at calculator take one dot main, calculator take one dot java line 16, so right here, we have this unsupported operation exception. So uh, for, for some reason, even though I said four plus eight, um, Java is claiming that, that that is not equal to um, oops, uh, to plus, and this uh, gets to uh, one consequence of object variables, of reference variables, like operator here, having a, uh, storing a memory address rather than the actual value. And this is because what I'm, what this if statement is saying is, does this variable operator, the address that it holds, is that literally the same as the address of this string plus? And the answer is no, these are not literally the same string. They're just two different strings that have the same contents. And so if I want to check the contents of the object, the contents of the string in this case, rather than comparing the memory addresses, that's where I use dot equals instead of the two equal signs. So now dot equals is uh, a string 
method, and if I mouse over it, VS Code helpfully shows me the documentation um, for this, and uh, it compares the contents of this string and whatever uh, argument I pass in. So now if I save it and click Run, it's going to recompile my program and ask for my input again, 4 plus 8, and it prints out 12. Hooray! We have a calculator that can add two numbers. Very exciting. So what more can we do with this? Well, I'll switch over to, to um, uh, a version of calculator that uh, I had written before, where uh, now we're going to upgrade it to where it will keep, instead of just asking for a single expression and then ending, like my calculator take one did, my calculator uh, uh, class is going to um, uh, keep asking for expressions uh, until the uh, user has uh, typed quit. So uh, I'm going to use a while loop to do this. And so I can say, in addition to reading, I can have the scanner kind of look at what the next thing it would read um, would be. And so while the next thing is not, notice my logical not here. So scanner dot has next quit will return true if quit is the next thing the scanner will read. And so I want while it's not going to be quit, I'm going to do my same read left operand, read the operator, read the right operand. And I've also extended this to um, uh, handle uh, addition and multiplication. Uh, and the, the last thing is I have this count variable, and you'll see I'm using the uh, increment, the plus plus operator here, uh, where this just adds one uh, to count. And um, there's uh, a version of this program in uh, the posted notes that has some additional, additional comments if you want to take a look at that. Uh, but if I run uh, this program, ask me to, to input my expression, so let's try uh, some multiplication. Uh, that works fine. Uh, 4 times 8. Uh, how about 7 plus uh, 7 plus 5? That works less well. Um, I don't remember 7 plus 5 being 7.05.0. Um, you may Notice that this is actually the double seven concatenated with the double five um, rather than, than added together. Uh, it does uh, successfully quit when I, when I type quit, so that's good. But uh, something is, is not quite right with addition here. And so what's happening is that I have a string, this um, bracket, so that I can have this nice little indicating kind of which... Um, uh, which, how many expressions you're, you're at so far. This could be incorporated into, into something fancy where you could use the results of previous expressions, though this particular program doesn't do that. Um, but I have this string. I add it to my integer count. And what that does is it actually converts count to a string and concatenates them. So I get what I want, which is kind of brackets one or bracket zero, and then another bracket. Um, and then we get to plus left, and that just adds my 7.0 onto the string so far, and then I add a, a, a double to the string so far, and that adds that on. So why did this not happen with multiplication? You may remember that in the precedence, in the order in which our operations happen, multiplication happens before addition. Uh, and so this multiplication actually happens first, and so it gets to 32 uh, in this case before combining with the string, whereas this combines first, left first, and then right. So I just need a pair of parentheses, oops, pair of parentheses uh, to make sure that the addition actually happens um, 
before it's uh, concatenated with a string. So now I can verify, yes, 5 plus 7 is indeed 12. So um, the last thing uh, that I want to talk about in this video uh, involves another, uh, a different example. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, mean. And what we see here is a, a program that computes the mean of some uh, of a series of numbers. And in fact, this uses this args thing that, um, uh, that, that we saw as part of this main method. Now, what is args? Args is an array. And uh, arrays in Java uh, are objects like strings, but they have some kind of unusual quirks and properties. So let me bring up the notes here to, to walk through them before uh, continuing. So um, uh, kind of all other data structures that we'll see um, in, uh, in, in Java, they all, uh, if we want to ask how many things are in them or how long are they, we'll use like dot length, we'll use the, um, a method uh, called like dot length with parens or dot size with parens. Arrays are special, they break the pattern. Uh, length is a field of the object. Uh, it's it's uh, a property rather than a method. And so if we want the length of this array args, we have args.length without the parentheses. So this is just how they do it in Java uh, and, and we get to live with it. So um, to, to declare the type of an array, um, it again is special. It's different than how any other types work in that if we have an array, uh, uh, you uh, if you're coming from Python, when uh, think of a, of a list, uh, a collection of, uh, of elements kind of in a particular order that have an index starting at 0, 1, 2, and so on. And so to declare the type of an array, we have uh, the type of thing in the array. So an array of strings has type string square brackets. And so this says, this is args is an array of strings. Unlike Python, there are a couple of key properties of arrays to keep in mind if you're, if you're coming from Python. Uh, they can only contain a single type of data. So uh, you have a string array or an int array or a double array, um, but only that array can have only strings or only ints. It's not, it can't have a mix of, of different things. Um, the arrays are also fixed in length, which means that uh, when an array is created, it's created with a certain number of elements and you can neither add nor remove elements. You can change what elements are stored at each index, but you can't add additional elements or remove them. So they're fixed length. Um, and arrays are also the only thing in Java that can be indexed using square brackets. So uh, in Python, uh, you might be used to indexing strings, uh, dictionaries, um, potentially other structures with square brackets. In Java, it's arrays and only arrays. Strings, uh, you have to do something, something different. Um, as an aside, how would you find out what to do to get uh, uh, to, to index into a string. Well, earlier in the notes, uh, when uh, there was a link that's official API documentation, um, and API stands for Application Programming Interface. And what it means is just like, what can this object do? That is its API. And so uh, if I go to this official A API documentation, uh, it uh, describes what a Java string can do. There's some description about uh, how they can be used. Um, there's uh, 
how you can construct new strings, and then there's this method summary, which is these are all the kind of dot something, all the things that you can do with a string. And so first up, we see char, char at character at a particular index. So we can get the character at a particular index. Um, and if we scroll down further, um, we'll also see that there is a starts with, there is a substring that you can give it a beginning index or a beginning and end, end index. So here we're seeing the kind of whether it's uh, uh, slicing or indexing, the Java string can can do all these things, but not with square brackets, with these uh, uh, methods, and we figure out what those methods are by consulting uh, the documentation. All right. Aside over, back to talking about computing a mean. So this, uh, this, this program, this string args, um, it is an array of strings that are the arguments the user entered on the command line uh, when they uh, ran the program, or in the case of Visual Studio Code, uh, when I run uh, the mean program, it's going to ask me, uh, enter program arguments or leave empty to pass no args. So this VS Code project has been configured to ask for arguments in this way. Um, and uh, the lab zero will kind of explain a bit about how this configuration works. And so if I want to take the mean of one, two, three, four, um, uh, type those in, and it says the mean is two. Well, the mean of one plus, the mean of, of those four numbers is not two, it's 2.5. Um, if you think back to uh, the part one video where I talked about integer division, uh, you might have a guess for why it's saying it's two rather than 2.5. Uh, let's uh, take a look at, at this, uh, this code here. So we have a variable for our total, a variable for the index of the array, and while the index is less than the length of the array, so we're just going to loop over all the, the indexes, um, uh, adding one to the index each time, we do total plus equals, and then um, we need to somehow convert our string version of the number, right, the string one, we need to convert that into an integer so that we can add it to the total. And we do that with this, uh, 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 what's called a static method, and, and more about what static means uh, in a future topic, but we can use integer.parseInt to turn a string uh, into an integer, and then we have this issue where our total and uh, divided by our args length is giving us an integer, so we can do the same uh, cast to a double or a float would also work, um, and then when uh, I run this again with one, two, three, four, it uh, correctly prints out 2.5. All right, so uh, the last uh, thing that I want to talk about in this video is kind of different ways to make this loop. So this while loop is, is working fine, um, but uh, Java offers some other kind of varieties of loop as well. So one of those is the C style for loop. So this is syntax borrowed from the older C programming language, which basically lets us take this initialization of the index, this test of when the loop should keep going, and this increment of how to change this loop variable index, take all of that and stuff it into a single uh, loop statement. So we can see that for int index starting at zero, int less than arg set length, index plus plus, and this for loop will do the same thing as the while loop version up here. It will do the initial, it will do this initialization once at the, when it starts the loop. It will check this condition every time around the loop, and it will perform this statement at the end of each time around the loop. And so this will 
kind of in a more concise and, and more normal way for Java, we'll, we'll do this loop over uh, indexes. And, and this is analogous to uh, a loop that you may be used to writing in Python where you have a list args, you get the length of that list, and then you get the range from zero up to that length, and you do a for loop over the indexes of that list. And, and this is how you would write that equivalent uh, loop in Java. And uh, modern Java also supports what's called a for each loop, um, which is uh, much more similar to for loops in Python, where we say for uh, loop variable string arg colon some sequence, uh, in this case an array, uh, that, we're, that we're looping over. And uh, it will assign arg to each element of our array args in turn. Uh, just like this um, Python loop would assign our loop variable arg to each element of our list args in turn. All right, with that, we've made it through the Java basics. I know it's a lot, but we're going to get lots of practice uh, as the term goes on. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the learning block.